Hi Storm fans, it's Aiden here and I'm delighted to bring you an exclusive interview with your starting goalie for next season, Evan Weninger. Evan, welcome to Manchester. I appreciate you having me on. No problem. Just to explain to everybody, uh, Evan is currently at his grandfather's uh, in Calgary. It's not the best internet connection in the world, but we will soldier on with, with the interview. So apologies if the video goes a bit behind uh, with the audio. But I just tell everybody a bit about Evan. So Evan's 26-year-old goalie from Saskatoon in Canada. So Evan, when did you first lace up the skates? Jeez, it was about uh, six years old. My dad flooded our backyard, basically. In Saskatchewan, it gets pretty cold, so we just would practice young, and then or when I was about five and six, and then after that, hockey leagues in, in Saskatoon, and played you know, just figuring out what I wanted to do, and once I hit 11, I think I got the first opportunity to try playing goalie. Uh, pretty much said and done right after that. I kind of made my debt to the to the position of goalie and and picked out from the minor hockey league that let us borrow them for the season. Pretty much have been riding it out from there. And what was it about being a goalie that you loved compared to other positions? Um, at first, it was more so I just wasn't good enough to team as a player, and so I wanted to uh, to still be able to play with them, but I wouldn't have been able to do that as a player, thankfully, only than I was a player, and so one of the coaches said, hey, we'll take you if you After that, I played the full year as a goalie and kind of realized pressure, I liked kind of being the the last is the only way to keep the puck out of the net. Scoring goal that I cared too much about anyways when I was a player. I kind of just like, and if we won, we won. That was what I wanted. If we lost anyways, so as a goalie, you can kind of control a little bit more of that. But obviously, that was kind of just what drew me to it and kept me coming back. So you did your NCAA hockey at the University of Nebraska and Omaha. Um, was it always what you wanted to do, go to university, and uh, were you always looking to go pro? When I was about – I didn't get drafted to the WHL year. I, uh, I ended up getting listed by the Kelowna Rockets. Me uh, – they gave me like a chance. They told me that cuts out college. And so at 17, well, if I try and I don't make it to maybe three years after that, where I play some junior A hockey in Saskatchewan, be a little closer to home, play a couple of years there and try and go to college. Um, got expedited a little bit. I was hoping to maybe play until I was 19, but I ended up actually committing to Omaha at the end of my 18-year-old and going in that next fall there. And, and uh, my first year, I split games for the first couple of weeks, and then at Christmas, I would kind of established myself as the, the starter about four the better part of all four year game and it was a really good experience for me and, and kind of gave me all that, ah, oh, this is one of the best leagues in college hockey and I probably try and see how I can play pro and confidence building blocks from there. And, and it's been, uh, it's been a fun run. So obviously after a few years, um, NCAA, um, you, it, it was in the 18-19 season where, where you first went pro. I see that you, you had, ended up at two clubs, at Florida and South Carolina, but with not many many games. So tell us the story of that season. I know you kind of started at uni and ended in the ECHL. Yeah, it was uh, 
into that season and you see all the guys that sign the NHL contract, ECHL teams and AHL teams that need guys still. So I reached out to my coach, asked if I was uh, was willing to come down and, and I might not get a game, but it's at least something to show teams that I and uh, I went down, and the coach was was very the last game of the season, which was for them the fiftieth win of their year. Um, that kind of got my foot in the door and duel. And within twenty four hours, I was on a plane going to South Carolina up for them for their playoffs there. I didn't get into any games, but that came from a really good goalie and Parker Milner and kind of get to you a little bit more again. Um, then I, I had to make that decision on what I was going to try and do. And been on my hockey career, I went to the Allen Americans, but Rocky started there, didn't get to play. And then two games and got sent in a trade to the Wichita Thunder where most of my North American pro was was with Wichita. I'm really grateful for how they treated me. I got to play a lot of games my second year there from a couple of really good goalies my first year, including Stuart Skinner. It was, uh, it was a fun experience in North America, but at the time I really wanted to, to go go to Europe and world and play in different leagues and kind of see how America I was kind of limited to the ECHL, not a lot of AHL team. Getting to his middle 20s and hasn't quite yet. And so I had to make that decision. And, and once I got it, it was something I want to do for a couple more years for sure. Talking about leaving the ECHL, I know a lot of guys who come over to England, they talk about the biggest issue in the ECHL is you don't have security, you can get traded big distances uh, during the season, and there's a lot of yeah. travel. They like big things for you as well. Yeah. Yeah, that travel, especially in that, that western side of the ECHL, 20 plus hours to Utah and, and Idaho and stuff. So you get off that bus after those trips, you just your beat thing on your body to sleep on a bus and you're traveling like that. So my first year there, or first overseas experience was Norway for minimal travel because it's obviously quite a smaller country. Germany was a little bit like the ECHL, but still nothing. And then Slovakia was just a treat. It was our longest boat. It's all, all in all, everywhere in Europe has been pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I know I know England has a little bit more traffic, maybe not Germany, but Slovakia. and Probably similar to a niece being at the bottom of of the country, our travel is off all the time. So it's should be a little bit better and I'm to get things going just because of the uh, not waking up every morning, wondering if you're getting that phone country and making sure that you don't have to sit on a bus play a game the next day. So it's, it's the nice lifestyle and in England, and I'm uh, I'm just really thankful. So I did notice that after you did your time in Norway, you did go back to the ECHL for for one more year, like you said at uh, Wichita. So what made you go back? Yeah. To to America. Um, there wasn't too many options for me overseas. The the Latin Norway and with COVID and everything, a lot of it was cut short there in Norway because of COVID. We we made the playoffs our, our first round against uh Stavanger and we ended up being sent home. And I was because of that extent to to send myself back overseas and then 
then maybe I had heard a few stories of people getting stuck in the quarantine and everything. So I was a little bit more, more year in North America, even though Norway had proven not that overseas and try it out. Um, but I kind of knew a good year in the ECHL to kind of cement my name. And I did overseas if the pandemic, what else could happen, right? So it was, it was a little bit of a decision, one that I'm happy with. And I, I did really enjoy that year in the ECHL. And it's, uh, it's hard to look back and really complain. And then you went to Germany, uh, DEL2 with uh, Selber Wolf. What was Germany like? <laughs> Germany, it was was really good. Um, better than I had expected. I mean, there was a second league. You, not sure what to. Really competitive. Really good. We, we were uh, at the, there that summer, so we were kind of behind the eight ball a little bit. I really enjoyed the atmospheres, the the game, but my team and a few factors are enjoyable on the ice for me. Um, around late November, early December, we're import forward, so we had one too many. And instead of, okay, you can... You can look for somewhere else if you find somewhere else. Don't want you to just have to sit here. So I was pretty thankful that they like that and said, "Yeah, you can go find somewhere. We don't want to waste your time." And uh, I was again thankful that Bond picked me up and I got to go kind of push for the playoffs and in half of the season to to kind of build myself up into the. And tell us about Slovakia, because that's uh, where you ended up next. <laughs> really, really nice country, because you don't hear a lot about Slovakia, but I loved I love the scenery there, a lot of mountains, and and the travel, like I said, is only a couple of hours, so that was was really nice. Uh, a lot of fun. It was, it was a little bit more North American style with a lot of hitting, like, point shots and grinding the puck in the corners and everything so familiar to me after playing kind of the run and gun german style um but again it was it was a really good experience for me the hawk and i felt kind of i felt good there i liked um unfortunately i wasn't able to to work something it was some it was an experience that I, I definitely look back on. I went there. I was happy that I, I gave it a shot because it was it kind of gave me uh, the confidence to know kind of where the hierarchy of all the leagues overseas. And speaking of the leagues overseas, the next one was League Magnus. Uh, <laughs> I, I hear Nice is quite League a nice uh, city to live in. <laughs> The, the city was the best city I've lived in. I mean, I haven't really named a lot of cities that attempt to dethrone it with Wichita and Zelda. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fun year. It was a good experience. It was tough for me personally. Native English speakers, I was the only one that bowl life, so it was a little bit tougher for me to through their second language because I couldn't speak French. Um, Hockey-wise, the league was pretty good, but it was kind of segregated where those top teams were like clearly the ton of lore to the bottom because we had a few team things going on. But experience I'm, I'm thankful for, I, I had to put a lot of I had to put a lot of the, what's, how would I say it, the, the way I would judge my success wasn't last, last, last year just because we had a lot of tough times scoring, weren't the greatest team, and so 
I still felt good about my second last place finish. Doesn't bode very well with that, but definitely came out of the year with with the confidence I needed to know I could, and that I can still be on teams that can compete for these. I mean, how did you end up in these? Because you don't get a lot of North American goalies in uh, League Magnus. It's very rare. Yeah. Uh, I had I had been talking to Zabonska about Reese about, and Nice had reached out, and after moving, like, last the year in Germany, moving to Slovakia for a year in the ECHL where I didn't move at least once. And so they, they kind of explain that you'll be, you'll be the starter. We'll need going to be leaving halfway through or dealing with that kind of stuff. Everything kind of lined up pretty well. I was just going to get to kind of be the starter and get comfortable in there. And so I just thought, ah, oh, it's simply like it and see how it goes. Maybe stay. If I don't like it, then it, uh, it was definitely an experience that was it's from, uh, from Monaco. It was, it was a nice little perk beside everything. Yeah, South of France is uh, quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and now you're coming to to Manchester. What's what's led you to here? Yeah. Um. Uh, I actually played against uh, against Coach Ginn in the, my last year there. He was in Kansas City. I was in Wichita. So we got pretty familiar with each other through that COVID season. He had when I when he had reached out and and explained to me. And just do all this. That was a pretty easy, easy to so played with uh, Stephen Johnson in Wichita, and it was really. And I, I grew up going to school and playing hockey with Mike Life in Saskatoon. So after going through a year, teammates are known English as first language that I had met any previous years before not really knowing what I was going into it was a pretty talk to Steve-O on the phone quick and find out how to talk to Mikey uh, Coral there and just hear this is somewhere I can go and I know I'll enjoy myself and we can push and have some success if we if we play right and I think my personal feeling after playing against him and talking, he's a smart individual, and he really knows the ins and tiny little details where some other coaches might think we have a few, a few little things that people might not expect. We have such a good group of guys so far that I'm, uh, I'm really excited. And what would you say your aim for the season is? Um, obviously everybody says they want to win the championship and that would be perfect, but hockey works and some of those top teams make it a little bit difficult to really believe that you can, but I do believe that we have a group of guys way and commit to the right, uh, systems. Not saying we will, but I think if we can play the right way and everybody would think we can be a top four or five T for sure. And even me. And how would you describe yourself as a teammate in the dressing room? Like what kind of character are you? Are you a quiet goalie? Are you a loud goalie? How would you describe yourself? Um... It, it depends. I'm, I like to get in on the conversation and jokes here with, with the guys that I, I know in the dressing room already. They'll be comfortable and joke around and have fun. Um, on game days, I'm in my own head and like to kind of do my own thing, but I'm still, and I like to joke and, and have fun with the guys because at the end of the day, having fun and it's a job, but if you're not having fun, it's, not so I like to kind of treat it as that 
looking at it like a kid playing a game and just the more fun you have and that comes with all the joking around with your buddies the poking around in the dress room the night before the day before practice and team the team chemistry is important for me and that's why i like to go out and disrupt it but just enough that people know that and final question what are you going to do with the rest of your summer Um, just saying, I'm at my grandpa's right now. I'm uh, going up to Whitehorse from my uh, Alaska. Uh, I will be quite a bit of golf, but I actually I also goalie coach it. I'll be I'll be on the ice with uh, with the kids for a couple hours, basically just hockey and hockey and working out. Got uh, I did all my fun stuff out in the mountains the last couple so that I can focus a little bit more on the hockey. Great. Well, Evan, it has been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Um, do hope you enjoy the rest of your summer, and we can't wait to see you in Manchester in September. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me on. I, uh, I hope the the I'll get too uh, separated there, but I appreciate you having to uh, show the fans and everybody what I'm about. Excellent. We'll see you soon. Cheers, Evan. Mm -hmm.